So there are essentially two types of brake pad compounds for mountain bike disc brakes. You have your organic or resin pads, and then you have your metallic or sintered pads. And knowing which one is right for you can actually make a pretty big difference in your riding enjoyment. In this video, a discussion on the differences between the two primary compounds and a very biased opinion on why I prefer one over the other. So I recently installed some new Shimano SLX M7100 brakes on the Hightower LT. And like many complete brakes, they came with metallic pads. That was likely because metallic pads are said to offer more consistent performance across a wider range of riding conditions, including wet weather. And their versatility is one of their biggest advantages. Also, metallic pads tend to be better for super Super long descents because they aren't prone to brake fade, which is where you start to lose braking power due to excessive heat buildup. And then lastly, metallic brakes just last longer than resin pads, and so for those not looking to replace their pads all the time, metallic pads actually may be a good option. But for all the positive things to say about metallic brake pads, there are a couple of drawbacks that keep me coming back to resin pads. Now first, metallic pads require heat to perform at their best. And once you get going down a long and treacherous descent, the metallic pads will offer you the most consistent performance after you get them nice and hot, that is. Now what this means is that for the initial warm-up period, which may only be a few hard stops, the braking power just isn't at its maximum. And this can take a little bit of time to get used to, especially if your terrain consists of lots of ups and downs, where your brakes have a chance to cool down between descents. Now, resin pads on the the other hand have great stopping power even when cool and offer what I feel is more consistent performance during that initial warm-up phase. Now yes of course after 30 minutes into an epic descent resin pads may begin to fade but here in SoCal we honestly don't have that many epic descents. In fact the only time I've ever gotten bad brake fade in SoCal was during a top to bottom run of Mount Wilson which is like 5,000 feet of nearly uninterrupted descending. Now I'd say most of the iconic SoCal trail systems like Santiago Oaks and Aliso Canyon are definitely challenging, but they don't require continual hard braking for super long periods of time. Plus for most of the year, the trails down here are pretty dry and dusty, and the improved modulation of resin pads helps to prevent unwanted lockups over terrain that's already kind of drifty. Now metallic pads tend to have a more binary feel to them, and once they're hot, their initial bite is pretty aggressive, which isn't always the best choice when traction is already low to begin with. Then there's the noise factor. Even with super clean pads and rotors, metallic pads, in my experience, howl like crazy once things get damp, which is just unpleasant. Now this isn't a huge concern in SoCal since it only rains an average of 30 days a year, and it's generally frowned upon to ride the trails down here when they're wet. But still, properly bedded and clean resin pads almost never squeal, which is nice for your sanity and for everyone riding with you. Now it's true that resin pads just don't last as long as metallic pads, but for moderate riding in dry conditions, I generally go through one or two sets of pads per season, which isn't really that bad at all. And resin pads also cost a lot less than metallic pads, which makes them kind of a no-brainer for me. Now, of course, brake pad compound is a personal choice, and of course it depends on the riding style, the terrain, and typical weather. And then there are even semi-metallic pads, which are supposed to offer a middle ground that combines properties of both resin and metallic pads, although I don't have any actual experience with those. So the point is, there are a lot of options when it comes to brake pads, and it's not something that everyone one thinks about and they're definitely not what I would call a sexy upgrade or component. But they are definitely a critical component, and I think making the right choice can have a somewhat significant effect on your riding. Now for me, who rides mostly blue and single black trails, and who lives in a pretty dry, dusty climate with almost no rain, and who rarely rides epic, hours-long descents, metallic pads just don't make a ton of sense. And their higher cost and susceptibility to brake squeal make them that much less appealing. Again, for me personally. Okay, well that's gonna wrap it up for this quick one, which was partially facts, but mostly opinion. I'm sure there are some of you that share my brake pad preferences and some of you that wildly disagree. Now I think the point is, as with most things, is just to be informed of the options and ultimately decide what makes the most sense for you and your style. Now if you're interested in swapping brake pad compounds from metallic to resin or vice versa, and you wanna know how to do so the proper way, you can check out this video up here for a quick how-to. Thanks again for watching and thanks for subscribing to the channel if you haven't already, and I'll see you next time.